Hi yogis, Helen Fiddler from Yoga Panacea here. I hope you're all well. I've put together a little video of some of the sequences and the poses we do in class so that you can enjoy your practice at home. So you can roll out your mat, enjoy the sequence and have a lovely day. Namaste. So we're going to start our practice in any comfortable position, seated, kneeling, lying down, wherever you want to be, and we'll take a few breaths to open the practice together. So take a few moments to get yourself comfortable. You can listen to the chimes as we open the practice together. And in your comfortable position, we're going to place one hand on the belly. And when you feel ready, you can inhale through the nose, feel the belly gently round on the inhale, and then exhale through the nose, the belly relaxes down. In your own time, easy inhale, the belly round, and easy exhale, the belly relaxes. Taking a few more in your own time. And then we'll change the breath to full yogic breath. One hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. And we inhale all the way up the body. So we inhale belly, chest and throat. Exhale belly chest and throat. Breath like a wave going up the body and down the body. Taking a few more full yogic breath, really feel that expansion in the chest and the lungs. And in your own time, you can slowly relax the hands down, one hand and then the other, and allow the breath to return to normal. Take a moment here to check in with how you feel. Just notice what effect those breathing exercises have had on you. Easy inhale and easy exhale. And then we'll begin our physical practice with our cat and cow twist and downward dog sequence. So we're going to start on all fours. The hands are directly below the shoulders. Knees are in line with the hips. And then we'll take our cat pose. We round the back. We tuck the hips under, rounding the shoulders and the back. Hold your cat pose and then draw a nice stretch into the back. And then through a flat back and arching the other way. Hips go high, head goes high. In your own time, into your cat pose. And then into cow. Working with the breath, easy inhale and easy exhale. And you can see if I do this side on, that when I round the back, I'm having a good stretch into the shoulders, top of the back. And then as you work the other way, the hips go high and the head goes high. 
shoulders away from the ears. One more time, rounding the back and then arching the back the other way. From here we'll take our twist, we bring the big toes together at the back, knees go wide. We bring one hand to the centre of the mat as the other goes up and we take a twist, turning the chest to the side and the arm extends. Shoulders away from the ears and breathe here. Easy inhale, easy exhale. And then we change sides, come down, over to the other side. Shoulders away from the ears, easy inhale. Easy exhale. When you feel ready, coming down and we'll push up to our first downward dog. So knees come back under the hips. We walk the hands forward. We tuck the toes, push the hands into the mat, really spread the fingers, palms into the mat. We tuck the toes and we push the hips high and back, lengthening through the spine. The head drops as you look back towards the thighs. Easy inhale, easy exhale. Option to bend one knee here, straighten the other as you work into the backs of the legs. And then see if you can find a still steady downward dog holding for a few breaths as long as you wish and if at any point you want to rest you lower your knees down to the floor you can always take some more cat and cows and then when you're ready knees come down and we go all the way back into child pose hips come back towards the heels Arms are stretched out in front of you and we drop the head down, resting the head either on the floor, you can rest the head on your hands or a cushion or a brick. And if it feels more comfortable, you can take the knees wide and you can bring the body down in between the legs and relax down there. Take your attention back to the breath and ground down into the mat beneath you. Through the mat, through the floor, and into the earth beneath you. And when you're ready, slowly coming up. You might wish to repeat that sequence one more time. We might want to move on to our lunge sequence. So for the lunge sequence, we're going to, some of you might want to use bricks. If you've not got bricks at home, you can place some books, pile the books up just as long as they're steady. And we're going to work through our lunge sequence, which can be given either a downward dog or fours, your choice. So from either downward dog or all fours, we're going to bend the knees and we're going to bring the right foot forward. I'm going to bring my left foot to mirror you. You're going to bring your right foot forward and you're going to sink into a lunge. Hands can rest on the floor, either palms or fingertips. If you feel like you need a little bit more space, then you can place your hands on bricks instead. So find a comfortable position for you. The important thing is that your knee and your ankle are in alignment. So we want to avoid the knee overshooting the ankle because that's not going to be good for the knee or the ankle. So just help that foot further forward and sink down. Knee and ankle in alignment, gazing forward, pulling the stomach muscles and take some easy breaths there. Then when you're ready, 
you place the left hand next to the foot and then you lift up into your twist, twisting in towards the leg and breathe. Top arm then goes back behind you, scooping along the floor and then you can lift up to a balance. Either hands to the knee or above the head, option to stay low if you prefer and have a good stretch. Just really stretching into the psoas muscle here. You can see that I'm in a lunge rather than a kneel. So if you're in a kneel further back here, you miss the stretch into the psoas muscle. So if you come a bit further forward and sink down, we're stretching into the psoas muscle here and we're also getting a good stretch into the hips. When you feel ready coming down and back to either all fours or downward dog, your choice. Lengthen through the spine in your downward dog. You might wish to take a few moments to rest here, either in down dog or child. You can hold for as long as you wish. In your own time, we'll go on the left side. We bend the knees, left foot comes forward. If it gets stuck, you can help it forward with the hand, put the back knee down and sink into your lunge. Shoulders away from the ears, hands can be either on the floor or your bricks. And then we take a twist. Right hand to the floor as the left hand goes high. And breathe. Easy inhale. And easy exhale. Top arm goes back behind you, scoop along the floor, and hands can either come to the knee or above the head, or option to keep them low, sinking into the hips. And breathe. Easy inhale and easy exhale. And then we come down, back to our downward dog. Lengthen through the spine, go back to the breath, hold here for as long as you wish and then we return back to child pose, connecting down to the floor beneath you. Knees can be together or wide. We'll take that sequence one more time with an option to dial things up if you want to. So we'll take that sequence one more time with an option to dial things up if you would like to. So right foot forward again, sinking into the hips, hands to the floor, or you can use your bricks. If you want to dial things up, we took the toes and we lift the back knee off the floor. Make sure you're strong and stable here. If you're feeling wobbly at all, you can just lower the back knee down, that's fine. So back knee on or off the floor, left hand next to the foot on the brick. You can always place your hand on a brick here to help you twist. And then we lift up with the right arm into your twist. Try and get that back leg as straight as possible. A few breaths here. Top arm goes back behind you. Scoop along the floor and all the way up for a balance. Back knee can be on or off the floor. Just checking the ankle and knee are in alignment and holding your stretch, holding your balance. Then option to go back to down dog or a three-legged dog here. For three-legged dog, we bring the front leg in, we lift the leg high and then we bend the knee and stack the hips. Looking under the right arm, flexing the toes back and then into your usual downward dog here. You can hold your downward dog here or rest in child pose. And for those of you who have a regular yoga practice, you might even want to add in a vinyasa flow here, working through your plank and into your cobra. And we go on the other side. We bend the knees left foot forward, 
sink into your hips, gaze forward, option to tuck the toes and lift the back knee, right foot either on the floor or you can place it on a brick and we lift up with the left arm, straighten that back leg as much as you can and twist into the pose. Easy inhale and easy exhale. Top arm goes back behind you, scoop along the floor and up for your balance. Back knee on or off the floor, get that back leg as straight as possible. And then into either a down dog, child pose if you want to rest, or three-legged dog to dial things up. Front leg comes in, then high. We bend the knee, stack the hips, and we look under the arm. Flex the toes back to protect the knee joint. Then into your down dog. Take a few moments to rest and breathe, wherever is comfortable for you. And relax, let go and breathe. So thank you for joining me in our practice today, a shortened version of our practice. So our cat and cows and twist and down dog and our lunge sequence. And next we'll do some sun salutations. So you can keep an eye on our, on our Facebook page, Yoga Panacea. I'm Helen and I look forward to practicing with you again. Have a lovely day. Namaste.